what would you rank the intensity of that LSD trip versus some of your other trips? Um, probably a 10, honestly. I would rate it a 10 because but previously I've only done LSD once and most of my experience is with uh, psilocybin. M most of my psilocybin experiences are extremely powerful because I tend to take about five or more grams. But the nature of this experience was just supremely strange. Well, how is it different from the psilocybin ones? <laughs> the psilocybin one tend to be very, very um, ego shattering such that the observer almost has trouble maintaining as well. Whereas this was almost like I was observing myself go through these loops, through these mini, mini ego deaths and rebirths, all while the observer seemed to remain. Um, Even when we worship the fireplace? Uh, yes, me and Adam did at one point worship and <laughs> surrender to the fireplace. We realized that we should stop uh, fighting this experience. It actually started with when I had been shaking pretty, uh, pretty roughly and wondering why, and it turned out that when the human body is cold, it tends to shake. And so we turned on the fireplace and promptly negative effects wore off. Very interesting. Do you remember how like it, it how um blown away I was at that like revelation? I was yeah. like, dude, we're just cold. Yeah, we realized that we're <laughs> apes that like fire. And then we were both on our bellies. Yeah, we and were, I was like we, reaching fully, fully. <laughs> we completely discovered why humans uh tend to go towards religion very quickly. But, but then we had these like remember we had these um these feelings and thoughts that that we were basic apes that yes. we we had regressed down to ape level oh certainly and it was like this was the most important thing in the universe was the fire it heat. was and we gathered around the fire and it felt deeply meaningful oh yeah mm -hmm. yeah so this trip was extremely powerful for me but more so it just really inspired me uh for a lot of reasons mostly because of the the meditative state that i realized may be possible if um if you were to, able to keep your composure on lsd but if you were meditating from the get-go, you probably could keep your composure much better. Mm -hmm. I think it was more challenging because we were pinging off each other. Yeah, absolutely. It's just the the tremendous self-awareness that comes from LSD. For example, I was somewhat hungry going into it, and I felt as if I could feel every stomach, um, not cramp, but clench, so to speak. I, I was feeling every muscle in my body. We had just worked out earlier. Um, I could hear tremendously well. I was hearing water falling outside, and that allowed me to observe essentially many levels of phenomena and that was deeply meditative i would say yeah and then just full-on putting the sam harris i think I, I picked a random day it was like day 24 i yeah, think it didn't of even the matter. sam harris and it was just i remember it's it so synchronistic too because the things he was saying were matching mm. right i forget what, i don't know right now but he was mm. saying things that were exactly what we were thinking yes. and we're like whoa it was almost like sam knew we were on acid and he was just guiding he's like all right guys you just went to oblivion let's we also wrapped up the acid trip with sam harris once again and so mm. that that was a great way to uh to close it out yeah it keeps you calm i don't want to say grounded because i was never really grounded i was just calm yeah that i think that's the sticky note that maybe didn't fully make it into the yeah cycle. but you can't be grounded no 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 because you're leaving the ground yeah you're <laughs> fucking soaring man through the cosmos absolutely so you compare that how would you compare that to like a 10 gram mushroom trip like what are the primary differences um besides what you stated about you know your sense of awareness being completely subtracted on the mushrooms what would you say the visual differences are a 10 gram mushroom trip has similar visuals in terms of like the the breathing of the room and, and subtle things like that but actually um i didn't have tremendous visuals on a 10 gram mushroom trip much more what i had was was a deep sense of a narrative going on. It was like I was being immersed in a different environment altogether. When I did 10 grams of mushrooms, it was on a beach um, where a lot of trees were nearby. And the major difference that I can notice is that being cast into a narrative is something that mushrooms really tend to do for me. And it's something that I cannot just like abstract out of. Like storyline? When I say narrative, I mean, yeah, more so like it has a it has a point, like like a conclusion, whereas this was many things occurring to me in any given moment that sounds chaotic yeah yeah it was it was rather chaotic so the acid was more chaotic than the mushrooms you feel like the mushrooms are trying to like lead you to some revelation or yeah or it could just be you leading yourself or something like that but but the nature of the mushrooms seems to be um to have a theme almost mm. um, that i'm left struck with afterwards um whereas this it almost felt like i could have directed my own theme if i focused enough so this is more exploratory then absolutely i think lsd is a tremendous tool for exploration of the psyche 
um, and psilocybin is as well, but I think for different reasons. Um, I also, after this trip, completely understand why the 60s and 70s are just rife with people who, who, um, who flee to the East after having an LSD experience. <laughs> I instantly think of Steve Jobs when you say that. Do you? Yeah. 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 Apple wouldn't exist without acid. Yeah, I think of Ram Dass and figures of that cohort. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it just all made sense after that. When you see the states that may be possible <clears throat> um, on LSD, you wonder if these could be induced through deep um, focus and awareness. And, and you know the, the traditional dose back in the 60s and 70s was about 250. Really? Yeah, on average it was like 250 to 350. Really? That was That was their dose, man. I was about ready to enroll with the monks. How did how did it drop to 100? Like these days the average dose is 100. And keep in mind, 100 of street blotter is usually 50 to 70. Hmm. Maybe it's because, well, actually it's pretty unlikely they're being used more recreationally now, right? They are being used more. Maybe that's why. More than the 60s and that's, 70s? That's, no, no, they're for sure. Really? Maybe it's dropped, first of all, obviously for money, people don't want to give that much out. But I think you have more recreational potential from a lower dose because mm -hmm. you can control it more. Absolutely. Your ego doesn't dissolve. Yeah. I mean, sometimes, but you know. Yeah. I almost wonder what a what a low dose, like 50 to 70 micrograms of, of LSD is like. Oh, give it a try. Yeah, I think it's, I'll have um, to. It's, it's relative. It can be intense. Mm -hmm. I went to Cirque du Soleil on 70. And How was it? Oh, it was so cool. <laughs> I always remember the dance. There was this dance with this woman, and she was on, like, you know those those huge rope swings? Mm -hmm. He's hanging from her hands, and they're, like, throwing each other. And I remember, like, when, when, when he'd throw her, you could see, like, this trail of just... It wow. was so mystical. Yeah. It's so cool. I, I, think, I think now that I'm thinking about it, one... More visual. Cool. Really? Actually, because... I was more consciously aware of what was going on. Mm -hmm. I think our trip, surprisingly enough, the the two to two fifty we did was very visual. But I want to make this note now while I remember it because, like, when you're that far mentally gone, the visuals hold so little importance, eh? Yeah. Like on the lower doses, yeah. you actually you're like, wow, this looks so cool. But when you're that <laughs> gone, you don't give a fuck. Yeah. After you just spent a few minutes in Adam's body, you're not so worried about you know some pretty colors you may be seeing. That's what I mean. So the lower doses, doses in a sense, are more visual just because you're more aware yeah. of them. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, don't really remember what I was about to say about mushrooms. Let me think. Mushrooms are beautiful. Yeah, definitely. Taste good fried. Yeah. Not no, to you. No, they taste disgusting. And we have such different tastes. I love mushrooms. I love olives. Man, that's disgusting. Oh, I, I remember what I was going to say. I think um, one of the biggest differences that I can notice about <clears throat> LSD versus psilocybin is just the, the stimulant effect that I get from LSD. And it's oh. really reminiscent to me of stimulants that I was addicted to, such as Adderall. Actually, it was only Adderall. How did you stay seated, man? I was circling. Yeah, I mean, I only stayed seated for a brief amount of time. And I think the reason that I wasn't was just because I was stimulated towards another act at that moment, just maybe feeling my muscles clench or something like that. Did you ever start circling? Yes, I did. Oh, you did? Okay. Yeah, I definitely started circling. Um, yeah, the feeling in the body is a lot like a, um, is a lot like a stimulant to me. Mm. Um, the energy that's being given to you. Mushrooms make me very tired. Dude, there's no electricity in mushrooms. No, no Remember electricity. Remember you were saying with the, it feels so electric. Like you feel like you've got mm -hmm. elect. That must be on the video because I absolutely. No, it is. Yeah. yeah. You're like fucking uh, Palpatine and you're like. Ah! Yeah, yeah, literally. That's what, that's essentially. <laughs> if you want to sum up me and Adam's Adam's trip, we're us both, both going back and forth electricity with, dueling. Yep, yep. Yeah. We were the dark Sith we're, lords. Yes, yes, we absolutely <laughs> were. It was, it was very strange. <laughs> Uh, um, just, cool though. Yeah, the, yeah. The hyper awareness of the body, um, and the but, but we are electric. Gives. That's what. That's, that's why electricity thing. affects us. Indeed. Like you know, the brain is electrical impulses. Yes. Yep. So it's like you're just hyper aware of all of that. Mm -hmm. oh, and yep. the way muscle fiber, like the way that it fires and twitches, it's all electrical impulses. Yeah, I think that's probably a misconception. If somebody hasn't done LSD and they have maybe a negative impression of it. A lot of people probably mistake the hyper awareness for illusion. Like I think really a lot of times people are tripping out on LSD. They're actually noticing real things that they didn't before as opposed to, you know, seeing fairies dance on your hand or something. Man, that is such a good misconception to touch on because at no point did we ever see things that weren't there. Never. Not once. Even when I was getting sucked into different things, I was yeah. getting sucked into things I could see. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And it goes back to like the old cliche of like, if you take mushrooms, you see dancing pink elephants and things like that. Never. And that has probably done massive damage to the reputation of these substances. But, but what's interesting is we both did have closed eyed visuals, but it was more like mandala patterns. Oh God. And it wasn't like entities. It was, no. it was patterning. Yes, it was patterning. And that's really important to notice. It's that uh, if you can utilize the hyper awareness that LSD gives you, we really don't know what the potential is for that. Think about some of our best thinkers if they were to use these substances, and a lot of them have. 
DNA. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I would love to see some inventor types or some even even politicians um, try this substance. Uh, 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 so what what's the difference to you between LSA and LSD, if any? Oh, man. So I've only had two yeah two real lsa trips mm -hmm. and the one that i've told you about was the 25 seeds worth of hawaiian baby wood rose which comparatively to morning glory seeds actually have more um lysergamides in them mm -hmm. so i forget which ones they are one of them has lsh or it's rumored have you ever heard this rumor you can convert the lsa into lsh by adding peppermint oil never heard of it maybe it's not a rumor anymore they used to say that the peppermint oil somehow has some conversion tech uh, qualities and they would say that whatever this lsh is is more visual mm -hmm. so for whatever reason i did add peppermint oil just to make note of that i think it's all bullshit um but visually speaking lsa w was like a totally different drug really hmm. heavy tracers Very. did you get many tracers i did on my first acid trip but not on this one no i i had some tracers but the lsa tracers were like keep in mind again a heavy dose of LSA is nine. I took 25. Mm -hmm. So I was on like a massive yeah. dose. I go like this and like I could still see that was, where my hand was. That was my first LSD trip um, in the video. I go like this and I felt as if I could see the entire trace of my hand. But not only that, the, the potential movements my hand could have taken when I did that. Oh, that's interesting. It was extremely strange. See, I didn't see potential movements. Yes. But beyond that, there was the number one difference was there was no patterning. Mm. zero really like you know how like on acid like you can see um the woods kind of like flowing and mm -hmm. in like even Especially a white the, wall the ceilings that you, you can see like some patterns forming no patterns but the most fascinating visual that i've got that i've only ever gotten on lsa mm -hmm. and like you know you can get trails and other things lsa had these unique fireworks effects like i would look at something even if there was no light and i would see like these exploding balls of light Whoa. like actually just sparking like like it actually looked like little fireworks Whoa. and they would just explode like doo, 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 doo. Yeah. it was so weird and then the uh this like highlighter effect where there was this angelic aura around my face like i remember looking in the mirror mm -hmm. and i'm white skinned but my face was like uh like someone turned the exposure levels off the charts and it was radiating white but Whoa. it would kind of like it, it would um go down in intensity like someone would turn down the dial but it was like a steady down and up so it would do this wavering like woo, mm -hmm. woo, where i would like glow yeah actually glowing yeah and then i'd do this and then i could see like the glowing like trail of my face and then the fireworks would go yeah so fucking weird wow and i've done a lot of psychedelics i've never seen those visuals before and, I, and i'm coming to every i'm apprehensive to say this because i don't want to indirectly Recommend. apply that you know yeah recommend that other people should take lsa mm -hmm. because the negative side effects of that high of a dose where i probably could have died vasoconstriction right bronchial constriction bronchial constriction yeah lsa especially particularly sorry hawaiian oh can't speak hawaiian baby woodrose seeds can cause bronchial constriction and uh on a massive dose i felt it so intensely i could feel my airways shutting down that's frightening and i had to lay on my back and like i was taking these very very shallow breaths because mm -hmm. you know if you take a deep breath you're really going to trigger it so i was just like <laughs> and uh i had my partner jasmine she's like checking my heart rate she's like looking over me and she said she was a minute away from going and we were at my parents house when we tried this this was years ago Yikes. she was like i almost woke up your dad to take us to the hospital wow but uh luckily she didn't and like i breathed through it um, but that man, and, and then the vasoconstriction too, because I was telling you earlier, when I would walk, it felt like someone was stabbing knives in my legs. Wow. It was not comfortable. One of the most unsettling things about our may call telepathic experience that we had is how many other people say these types of things. Um, Do they? Yeah. And my only acid video that I've created, it's, it's pretty much chocked full of people trying to share their experiences, um, of this nature. And I didn't even mention it in that video. So of course you have to filter out certain people who just want to, you know, be the same or have strange experiences, but nonetheless, it's rather strange that, uh, there may be some set of people who have experienced this phenomenon. It's, it's equally strange that not everyone does. Yeah. So what I want to know, is it, is it an individual phenomena yeah. or do you have to be matched with the right person? And could it be captured in a, in a scientific or lab setting? Like, because who knows really, could. right? You think so? Well, I mean, you could observe it in a lab setting, but yeah. I don't know if it could be captured. Yeah. It makes you wonder if like, it, it's an elusive, um, an, an elusive property of the human mind in certain circumstances. 
so what what did you like coming out of that experience what is your biggest takeaway my biggest takeaway from the experience was that well besides the fact that the nature of the mind is extremely non-understood was one the strange fact that even during extreme thought loops and ego dissolution an observer remains to note that these things are happening and i really am grateful that i had that experience because at this point i'm wondering when that impression is going to leave me and besides that of course there's the remaining questions about how this phenomenon that i experienced with you happened i am absolutely <laughs> I guess befuddled. I, I don't understand whatsoever. Befuddled. I am befuddled. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, uh, where's his monocle? Um, I told you I was an NPC. <laughs> yeah, what was yours? My biggest takeaway? Yeah. I, I'm, I'm not totally clear what yours was. Yeah, I'm not fully really clear what mine was either. <laughs> I really don't know. We My both... biggest takeaway is... Um, <laughs> See, I know. How many times do you think we've looked at each other and said, man, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know, man. I don't, I don't care how smart you think and you that are. That is it, know. though. My biggest takeaway is I don't know that's, anything. Okay, I'll say that's fine then, too. I, I have no idea. I had a pretty good understanding of what reality was. Yes. And then after that. After my belly was on the floor near the fireplace, I think I lost most sense of what was going on. After I was in your brain and sucked through my goddamn DMT bottle, how, I have was no it? idea. Did you enjoy your stay? That was so scary. Maybe you can get into it next time. Teach me how to hug. I teach you how to hug. Mm -hmm. I think you have some emotional insecurities. I think you're absolutely right. I completely agree with you. That it's only, you got to work on them. Even the forces of LSD cannot break down my emotional shields. Oh, and they won't. So if you could do something differently going mm -hmm. into that trip, what would you have done differently? I don't know. I really don't know because I, I couldn't have predicted what actually occurred to us. So it's, it's hard to say. Well, what did you think was going to happen? Um, I thought that it would be. I mean, really, honestly, I went into it very open minded, to be completely honest, because I, I've only done it once before. And I didn't want to be naive and think that this was going to be a replication of my first experience. And so, yeah, I'll have to probably probably uh, think about that for a while. But still, was it very different than what you would have assumed? No, no, it wasn't different in its character. Um, I think certain specific events that happened, maybe. I wouldn't have assumed that we were going to, like, have the telepathic community. No. I, like, I had no assumption of that. No. Like, going in, no part of my brain thought we're going to have telepathy. I thought we were going to fucking see some visuals, lay down, get lost in some music. Yep, yep. Like, that's what I thought. Yeah, that uh, that spongle that you played did something to my mind, Adam. That was very strange. I highly recommend, or perhaps even disrecommend, that someone <laughs> listens to the spongle at the come up of an acid experience oh, because I love my it, it is as if it completely. <laughs> I guess just the highly suggestive state that you're on on acid, and then you hear you hear layers the, of sound. I was just literally going to say the layers, the layers, the layers. Mm -hmm. And yes. you, have you noticed on acid, you can actually like break apart the layers in ways Indeed. that when you're sober, you can't. Especially with your sound system, man. It was absurd. I told you. Yeah, it was. You did tell me. You yeah. warned me. To be fair, Adam <laughs> completely warned me. He said, you know, you're going to hear Spongle on this sound set and you might not come back the same I person. I was like, I spent more on the sound set than my first car. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you did. That's absolutely true. And it was worth it. It was worth it because you might be able to form a small black hole if you listen to enough <laughs> on acid. That's, that's for sure. That was cool. Yeah. Oh, boy. So what else do you want to talk about? Hmm. I'm feeling like our podcast is nearing the end. Yeah, I think it is. Yeah, yeah. That's okay. No, it's good. Mm -hmm. I think Short was, and sweet. This was absolutely great. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so let's uh, let's plug your channel. Let's plug my channel. Come <laughs> subscribe to The Quentin Experiment. I'm trying different substances and trying to describe their character. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to talk to the camera now. Ooh, let's do a switch up from you to the camera. So if you guys want to check out Quentin, subscribe to the Quentin Experiment. I'm just repeating exactly what he said yes, right he now. Is. Subscribe, subscribe. <laughs> subscribe. I was the one who invited him down. And the reason why I invited him for these videos is because I see fantastic potential in him. He's an intelligent human being, and he is documenting these experiences and going about speaking about them from a rational standpoint, but also from an open-minded view, which I think is insanely important. Thanks, brother. Welcome. I'm tired of seeing all these people who are like, they're, you know, you're either too far one way. <laughs> you're either talking about aliens all the time or you're not talking about anything at all. Yeah, yeah. But I like your angle because you're like, you're measuring both. Yeah. It's 
kind of what I, I, I feel like I do the same thing. Of course, you're the forefather of this category. Thanks for leading the way. <laughs> no worries, man. Well, for the camera's sake, let's shake hands and pretend that we're parting ways when All we're right. not. We should have done an awkward hug to close We it should have done an awkward <laughs> hug. All right. Thanks, dude. All right. Thanks, man. And uh, everybody watching, make sure you, depending on when this is released, there's going to be ever. a link, if ever, there's going to be a link popping up to one of the other two or three videos we've done together. And uh, you're not going to be disappointed because uh, we get into some crazy shit. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, make sure you subscribe to my channel, subscribe to his channel, like my video, like his videos, and we will see you guys all in the next one. Love you. See ya. Woo. That was great, man.